What's up guys, now in a recent video we took a look at the amazing AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT. This was a graphics card released in 2020 and it was one that I really wanted to upgrade to at the time but I just couldn't actually find one. While doing the video on this card though it kind of got me thinking I wonder how well the graphics card I did have at the time which was this one here the AMD Radeon 5700 XT would actually perform in today's games so that's what we're going to do today we're going to give it a bit of a test. Okay, so all the way back in 2019, AMD released their 5000 series graphics card, and it was at a time where they actually tried to really shift things up a gear. Before this card, we had the Radeon RX 500 series, which was basically just a flip-flop of the 400 series, which was also a, basically a flip-flop of the 300 series. So they were actually in a bit of a dark space, but then they actually came up with a brand new architecture in the form of the RDNA. The 5000 series were the first on the RDNA architecture, and it was at a time where AMD were really shifting up a gear and trying to compete with AMD. Nvidia. Although they didn't actually produce a full range of graphics cards, the fastest or the highest one that you actually got was the 5700 XT. There was no 5800, there was no 5900, and they kind of went down from there for the 5600 XT as well as the 5500 XT, but we're not going to be talking about those ones today. The 5700 XT though was actually a pretty decent graphics card. It really competed well with the Nvidia GeForce GTX 1080 Ti at the time, although it was a smidge slower, but over time AMD's fine wine has really actually brought this card alive. For its time, the Radeon RX 5700 XT was actually boasting some pretty impressive specifications. Of course, the architecture was RDNA 1. It had a base clock speed of 1605 MHz, a game clock speed of 1755 MHz, it had 2560 shaders, as well as 8 GB of GDDR6 VRAM. It had a memory bus of 256 bit and an interface of a PCIe Gen 4 by 16 and it had a typical TDP of around 225 watts. It also had a release price of around $399 which is actually not that bad considering today's prices but at the time it was a little bit steep for an AMD graphics card but we're going to kind of forgive them for that as well. The exact model that we got here today is my original Gigabyte Gaming OC card and I specifically bought this one because I just thought it looked nice as well as its three fan configuration. I thought that would actually provide some pretty decent cooling. I've had this card since that time in a box and I don't get it out that often, but when I do, I'd just like to give it a little bit of a test and really just see what kind of capabilities it's got. So of course we need to test this card and we're gonna be testing it in our benching rig. For those of you that are regular to the channel, you will notice that our benching rig looks a little bit different. And this is because we are rebuilding the system at the time. The internals of this are still the same. So it is an AM4 platform with a 5800X3D with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. That should be more than enough to show the full potential of this card. So. Let's get it onto the test bench and see exactly what this card can do. Now, one of the other great things that I love about this card is its actual size. I think it is the perfect size for pretty much any case, to be honest. The length of it is just over the width of a normal motherboard, so it doesn't look too big. And it's also just a dual slot card as well. I think Gigabyte did a great job of the design of this card, and they actually had it across multiple different models, including Nvidia graphics cards too. So if you were out there trying to find a card that looks like this, you can pretty much get anything in that kind of design. But the card to install the drivers, it is still supported by AMD, although it's not fully supported by all new games. And this is where the disappointing thing comes in. For any of you out there that want to play something like Indiana Jones, the new game that's just been released, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to do it on a 5700 XT. If you even try to start the game, you're gonna get a big fat error, basically saying it doesn't have the hardware that's needed to be able to play the game. That is, of course, because it is missing any kind of hardware related ray tracing kind of units so unfortunately we're all out of luck with that one and i think actually we're going to start seeing that as a similar pattern going forward so it's probably not the best graphics card to go out and purchase unless you can get one really really cheap and if you really want to play old games so we're going to try some other games instead another game where this will actually struggle is of course alan wake 2 and that's because the 5700 xt does uh, not support mesh shaders which that game really does need to get the optimal performance but it will actually start the game. So that's what we're going to start. And we're going to see what kind of performance we get. Now the 5700 XT is actually above the minimum requirements for the game, even though it doesn't technically have the mesh shaders. The minimum requirements in terms of graphics card for this is a GTX 1070 or an RX 5600 XT, which are two cards that are quite a bit slower than this one. So hopefully it does give this card a good chance. I'm also hoping that the slight overclocked version that we've got here in terms of the Gigabyte Gaming OC will give us a better chance than the standard version. So it's always worth kind of taking note of that too if you are going to be looking out for a model. But we are actually in game now. The game has started and things are not looking too terrible. 
We're currently getting an average of 42 frames per second, but we are suffering on those 1% lows there, only getting around an average of 21. The further we walk, the uh, lower the normal average FPS actually becomes. We're now currently getting 36 frames per second with an average of 38. I wouldn't necessarily say this is the best experience. It is more like a console based experience, but at least the card is actually playing the game. It is loading up. We're not getting any major stuttering at the moment, although our frame time graph is all over the place. It's jumping up to the uh, 60s, now it's in the 20s. So it's not the greatest experience. And I suspect a lot of that is down to those mesh shaders. But what we'll do is we'll head over to the settings and we'll see what we've got configured. If we go to our graphic settings, we can see that we're currently running in 1080p with a native resolution, no FSR or upscaling here. All the testing we're going to do today is going to be restricted to 1080p. Yes, the RX 5700 XT when released was a 1440p-ish card and that's basically based on the games that were available at the time. Nowadays though it is strictly a 1080p graphics card so that's what we're going to stick to. We do have all of the effects currently enabled, motion blur, film grain, lens distortion, I don't really like all of those things but we're going to leave them on for a minute and then of course we've got a quality preset of medium. Now the first thing that I always like to do is actually just go reduce our quality down to a medium setting and then I like to disable all of these effects. I don't like them any Anyway, and if anything it's just going to help us kind of get a better performance but we're going to leave it in a native resolution for now and see if that actually boosts us up a little bit we'll drop back into the game and see where we are at now so we haven't actually improved that much we've gone up a few frames per second at the moment we're still getting an average of around 38 39 we built our 1% low is still very low at 21. So dropping the game down to a medium setting clearly hasn't really affected our performance that much. The graphics card is running at 98, 99% utilization. So it is actually working quite hard here, but we're just not getting any kind of real decent experience out of the game. So we're going to have to drop back to the settings again, and we're going to have to start lowering some more things. We'll pop over to our graphics here. We'll go down to the quality preset. We're going to set this game on low. Now, Alan Wake 2, even in a low setting, actually does look fantastic. You're not going to get all the fancies and the reflections and all that kind of stuff, but it still looks like a great game. So if you are somebody that does need to play it in a low preset, you're not really missing out on much anyway. We'll go back up to the top here. We're not going to enable any kind of upscaling yet. What we first want to do is just see if that low preset is going to help us at all. We'll go back into the game. Now, we have had a little bit of a jump up here in our averages. We've got currently got an average of around 52 53 frames per second although our one percent low is darting all over the place at frame time graph is looking much better now but it does depend on what we're looking at it's not jumping up into the 60s anymore it's down in the 20s early 20s now and again it jumps up to the mid 20s i'm sure that we're going to see a drop in performance as we start getting into the foliage area because Generally, that is where this game suffers quite a bit, and it has dropped a few frames per second, but not too bad. Not something that I would say is unplayable. At the moment, the game is actually feeling reasonably smooth, although our 1% low has now dropped all the way down to 19. I think that's because we came out of that foliage, and if we turn very quickly, we can see our FPS drop quite a bit. So I think we're going to have to continue to push this game down. Hopefully, I don't think we're going to get a 60 FPS experience here, but hopefully we can get a 40 fps experience all we really want to do is really bring those one percent lows up at the moment so hopefully a bit of upscaling can help us achieve that heading back into the settings we'll go to our graphic settings again and what we'll do is we'll enable fsr2 it is available here we're going to set it to a balance setting we're going to turn it all the way down to balance because that's just going to give us the best chance now setting it in quality will obviously improve the quality of the picture but I just don't think it's going to be enough to really get that kind of 1% low up. But let's go back into the game and see. Now that we're back into the game, we'll reset some stats here. We are currently getting an average of 56 frames per second. So our average hasn't really increased that much, although it is jumping up significantly now up to the 70s. So it must have actually been loading those settings in. We currently get an average of 83 frames per second. Our 1% low, though, is still actually quite low, sitting around 27 frames per second. That's not really causing much of an issue on screen though. Our frame time graph is looking okay. It's not the best, but there's no major big spikes and jumps up. So I would kind of kind of consider this game as starting to become playable now. It's a bit of a shame that the uh, average FPS is so high with the 1% lows being so low. We do have a pretty decent CPU in this system. So it's just one of those things really. I just don't think that missing the mesh shaders on the card is really helping us at all, but I think you could actually get away with playing this game now. 
Of course, as soon as we hit this foliage here, everything just dives down to around 30 FPS. So as long as you're not actually in any kind of trees and things, you're probably going to get a decent experience. Let's just run over to the road here. This is quite a bit of a demanding section here because of all the trees and things. We are now getting an average still of around 72 frames per second, even though our continuous is darting up and down. It depends what we're really looking at. I'm going to do this. I'm going to run through these birds here and just annoy that lady. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll cross the roads and we'll take a look where the kind of street detail is and see what kind of thing we get. Now, we are currently getting an average of 70 frames per second, but our continuous has really dropped down now to around 40 frames per second. So I think if you are desperate to play Alan Wake 2, you could probably get away with it on a 5700 XT, but it is really showing the weakness of the card now. It just doesn't have the technologies to keep up with a lot of modern games. Of course, Indiana Jones just won't start on it, so that's the, a big pitfall for this kind of graphics card now. And with games like this, you're going to have to lower all of the settings down, and it still only just becomes playable. The averages here are not too bad, but the 1% lows are just really going to kind of take away from the gameplay. But that is Alan Wake 2 on a 5700 XT. It kind of performed as expected. Playing the game on a GTX 1080 Ti, you get kind of a similar performance. And this card is very similar to that now, particularly after its refinement and new drivers and things. But let's take a look at some other games and we'll see if we can get them playable. And if so, you probably, as long as you're not going to play these games, the card should be okay. So as you can see from those benchmarks, actually most games will play reasonably fine on an RX 5700 XT. It's only really those games that need something in terms of new hardware or some kind of mesh shaders or something like that 
where you're really going to get a big issue. Of course, we stuck to a 1080p resolution for all of the games, and aside from Alan Wake 2, which where the performance is quite questionable, most games actually achieved an average of 60 FPS or above. A couple of outliners here, of course, are things like Doom Eternal, where you can run the game in 1080p with an ultra nightmare setting and still get a very high FPS experience. That is expected, considering that that game is probably the oldest that we tested now in the list. The Horizon Forbidden West was quite a surprise to me because even in 1080p with a high preset, you can still get an average of 60 FPS with a 1% lower of 50. We have to thank AMD's FSR plus frame generation for games like Space Marine 2, which was pretty unplayable without using it, but running that game in 1080p with a high preset while enabling FSR 3.1 with a native resolution just to kind of keep some of the quality there and frame generation, you could easily achieve an average of 79 frames per second with a 1% low of 60. That means that the game is actually more than playable and it still looks absolutely fantastic too. And we had a similar picture here for Stalker 2 running the game in 1080p with a high preset. We did need to enable FSR 3.1, leaving the resolution native again, but enabling frame generation. We managed to get an average of 83 frames per second with a 1% low of 65. Like I say, that means that most games will actually play on a 5700 XT and you're going to have a great experience from them. It's just a shame that some of the more newish things that require new kind of hardware technologies are really going to let this card down. It's actually been a lot of fun to see what the RX 5700 XT can still do in 2025. I think this card will make a great graphics card for those that just want to play indie titles or older titles and probably a lot of esports titles. I think the old RX 500 series are going to get replaced by this because it is still supported by drivers and things like that. So AMD haven't really let it go yet and you can still pick them up pretty cheap. If you were to go and purchase one of these brand new back in the day, they would cost you around $400 or £400 here in the UK. Then during the mining boom, they went all the way up to about a thousand pounds. People wanted ridiculous amounts of money for them because they were very good at mining. But after that, they kind of waver now between 150 pounds and 200 pounds. So if you can pick one up for the lower end of that, so around the 150 pounds, and I do know people that have purchased them even cheaper than that, they can actually make a pretty decent graphics card, but don't expect to play the latest and greatest games. You're going to walk into issues whenever you do that. And that's not a great thing if you want to be future thinking. But for those of you that want to play the older games, like I say, or the indie titles, this card is going to be perfectly fine for you. Let me know in the comments what you think about the RX 5700 XT. Do you have one? Do you plan on upgrading? Or have you completely got rid of it now and gone for something new? Most people I would suspect have done that by now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. We're going to be taking a look at a lot more graphics cards this year, so you will definitely want to catch them. And I'm sure, as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.